You ready for this? Oh, that's gonna be good. Guys behind the camera, this sucks. You can't have any. Welcome back to Machete Boys Barbecue. Today I'm at Smokestack Barbecue Supply Store with my buddy, Corey J. Getting excited for uh, surf and turf today. Surf and turf's gonna be wonderful. We have a myriad of things to cook today. We're gonna do a yellow fin tuna steak. We've got a hanger steak, and then we've also got a Wagyu beef ribeye. What's special about these steaks, Corey? Can you tell the, tell the good people? Uh, local to Brainerd here, awesome local family, the Malloys. Known them since, got grade school. Good yeah. people, local meat, and just great Wagyu beef. Store is also selling seafood now, which is where we got the yellow fin tuna from. I have cooked the seafood here from the store before with uh, some shrimp and it was absolutely delicious. Start with this hanger steak. Have you ever trimmed one of these before? I have not. The hanger steak has uh, this fat seam into here, right? So it's really nice to cook into two pieces and just north of that fat seam, take that out and then we should probably also get that silver skin. That's off the go too as well. Hanger steak is a good steak for a marinade. We're gonna use our friends from Croy Valley, their garlic and orb steak marinade. But we're gonna let that soak for about 30 minutes and then season it up and then we'll show you guys how we cook that off on the grill. How's that going? <laughs> Looks like you're doing pretty good. Well, now we probably want to separate out those two pieces. So this is what it looks like when you have those two pieces separated. And this is what we were trying, we're trying to clean up out of there, just that fat seam that runs across. Corey's gonna run his knife out of there and just behind it and just take that, that piece off of it there. So you've got a Ziploc bag hanging around here somewhere, right? So we're just gonna take our two pieces of steak and we're gonna put that right in there. We're just gonna throw a little bit of this garlic and herb in there. And then we'll slip that in the fridge. Steaks like this, like it's not really gonna do you any good to marinate these for hours on end. 30 minutes, you're gonna get enough flavor on those guys. Looks good to me, I'm buddy. excited. Yeah. All right, so now here is the, the Wagyu ribeye steak. Uh, this is probably, what do you think that is? About an inch, an inch thick? Inch and a quarter, yeah. So we're just gonna get this open here. So are you a big, do you like to trim off your, uh, all the excess fat on there or you just kind of let it ride? Uh, I'll trim a little bit of the stuff off the edges, but otherwise yeah. I mostly let them ride. And these are trimmed down pretty nice already. They Sometimes are, they are. And this has like there. a really nice spinalis on it. And then I usually, so I'll trim off a little bit of this guy and then that'll be, that'll be our ribeye. We've got a new rub that I've never actually tried. Have you used this before? I haven't used that one. This is a Southern Thunder from Boar's Night Out. It says World Champion Steak Cook-Off Association award winning right on the top, so it's gotta be. We're just going a good medium heavy coat on there. And we're just using this by itself. All right, so we're gonna go out, we're gonna put this on, what are we cooking this actually on? Uh, the Yoder 640 today, so that's the one I have at home. Yep. I love it. We've got it turned up to 300 degrees right now, so we're just gonna go put that on and let this rock. We need a snack while we're waiting on our steak to get up the temperature, so we're gonna reverse sear this ahi tuna steak. We're gonna run up pineapple by Dizzy Pig, pineapple head by Dizzy Pig. They also have a spicy one, but- uh, I'd prefer the spicy one, but- You this prefer the spicy one? This one's good? This one's good. I've never even tried yeah. it. Basically, it's just pretty simple, right? You just season up your ahi tuna steak with whatever you can imagine flavors that you want onto it. Uh, fish is gonna take on flavors really easily, so be careful, don't overdo it. Um, and then you're just gonna sear it for one to two minutes on each side, and that's gonna give you a nice medium rare temperature, so we should end up with a nice crust on the outside, medium rare in the middle, nice and pink. See how we did. Not bad. Kind of yeah, bland though. It is. <laughs> it's very bland. It, just, it tastes like straight up sugar. I think I'd go probably with a different rub for this. Something that's a little bit more bolder. It needs at least a little bit of salt. There's like no salt. No salt in there. Is this rub pretty, this rub's pretty not salt intensive probably? Their rubs are all fairly low. Yeah, low sodium on this one. So not a complete failure on the tuna, but we should have probably picked a rub that had a bit more salt in it. Stay tuned. Next up is we're gonna sear off that ribeye. All right, so we got our ribeye off. This one's at 129, so we're getting a medium, medium rare, medium, medium steak wild. today. <laughs> Before we sear, we're just gonna let it sit here on the counter for a few minutes, let it, uh, let it calm down. There are some options that you, do, you can do right now to give it a little extra boost of flavor. One of those is to hit it with a little bit of duck fat. You could also let this rest in a little bit of beef tallow or just straight butter would work too. But, so I'm just gonna give that a little spray of duck fat, flip her over, give her a little spray there. And we'll get this back on the gilding. And how long are we searing this for each side? You going a minute per side? It's your show. Less. Yeah, about sure. a minute per side. In about a minute yeah. per side? Yeah. I think it smells like that. That one side is done. Let's see how that sear looks. So one one critique that I am gonna make for you that you're doing right now is so you've already cooled that part of the metal down. So you're not getting a great sear there because that's already been cooled down. 
which is why I turned it this way is because so I should have started yeah there. so you should have started like closer to the firebox here where that larger spot is there because that that would have been done and then you could have flipped it and flipped it over on this side so that way you would have had two fresh new hot spots and this mm. would have dried out in between so a little tip to think about for next time when you're searing your steaks and for you guys at home if you're trying to get a better sear on your steaks consider using a cold spot or a spot that hasn't been used yet uh, so that we have a little bit more real estate there i like it one more minute all right so i think we're good on that other side yeah that looks that looks pretty that looks pretty seared well seared well to me and he's just hitting the edges there and I, I like that idea because the crispy edges with the, the little burned ends on the fat, those are always, always delicious. So we're going to take this inside, let it rest. In the meantime, we're going to get that hanger steak out of the marinade, get it seasoned up, and that'll be the last thing we put today. So here is a Malloy Farms ribeye reverse seared on that Yoder smoker. So one thing that you can always do too, uh, we should have did this with the ahi tuna, is whenever you're looking to like up your meat factor and improve the flavors is to add a little bit of the salt. One of the things that sell here in the store is the Salve Maris by Elk Creek Barbecue. And this is a great finishing salt because it's like a fine sea salt. So while Corey's doing that, we're going to do the old salt day thing. <laughs> well, you're so fancy. <laughs> it gets salt everywhere but on the steak. Steak looks good. Grab that middle piece out there. Let's show these folks how we did. Cheers, bud. Nice work. I like it. I like it too. That is nice. That is nice. It would be better with a really hard sear on there, but Corey screwed that up, so <laughs> stick around. We're going to get that hanger steak on here next. Time to cook the hanger steak. The hanger steak, we are going to do direct. We're going to flippy flippy on the grates. Corey's going to do the flippy flippy, so he's going to get a second. Oh, so am I going to do it right this time? You're going to do it right okay. this time? Okay. All right, we're going to be yeah. shooting for a medium rare temperature, so we're going to be trying to get it to about 127. So don't screw it up this time. So we got our steaks here. All I'm going to do is take this off and I'm going to pull all that excess marinade that's off of there. But that's all flavor too, so I don't want to. I don't want to rinse this. That would just defeat the purpose of that. They smell good. They look good, and we are going to season them up. We're sticking with the Dizzy Pig again today. We've got the Dizzy Pig SPG that we're going to season those up with. That looks. It looks pretty good. I like your seasoning technique. Nice and better hot. than my. Uh, better than your. Better than my flip. Your flipping. Your flipping job. It was super heavy. Heavy with the herb. I yeah. love this stuff. Sweet. Looks good. Let's go get them on the grill. Hanger steak. Here we come. That looks good right there. Awesome. And we'll give it about two minutes on this side, and then we'll flip it over and do the other side. So cook time total has been about six minutes so far. We've got about three flips, and we are temping at about 127. So I think that's a good place to pull this off if we're shooting for that medium rare steak. Those are looking good. See that? See, that is the sear that we were going after. This is what you get when you flip it over to a cold side and move it back and forth. That's a really nice, healthy sear on there, I think. Nicely done, Mr. J. Okay, so we're back. Our steak's been resting 10 minutes. They look good when we put them on there. They look good right now. Why don't you bring those over here so we can see what we got. Fantastic. Look at all those juices oh, hanging out in there. That looks absolutely perfect nicely done sir let's get that knife out and cut into it and see what we got all right all right run her down brother you ready yeah let's do it let's do it right in the middle there let's show them what we got that definitely sucks all right well thanks for hanging out today <laughs> no this is by far the best one we've cooked all day the, it's got a really extreme beefy flavor nice char nice char which is great absolutely not well brother i appreciate your time today <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hanging out and uh, cooking with me. This has been fun. Yeah, it's been a great time. Yeah. We'll let everybody try it. This is good stuff, man. It is. No, but it's, um, this is definitely my, I like this to be more than a ribeye. You yeah. know what would set this over the top? If you sauteed some mushrooms with it. Mm -hmm. And like had some onions. mushrooms and onions. That'd be better to do this. But if you're liking this content, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Thanks to my friends at Smokestack Barbecue Supply Store for letting me hang out today. And we'll see you guys next time. See you guys.